Hey everyone, Wayne here. Today we're going to do a tutorial playthrough of Paulo Morai's Blitzkrieg World War II in 20 minutes. Um, it's a pretty fast playing game. Obviously it'll be a little bit longer um, playing this time as I'm teaching it, but we're still going to get through it pretty quick. Um, it does have official solo rules. So there is a main rule book and then there is a solo rule book. Um, pretty simple. Basically you're following their, uh, some chits you draw to determine certain strategies, and then you're following a full chart here. So I'll explain as we go along. Um, the game here is divided up into the different theaters. So it's very abstracted here. As you can see, Western Europe, Pacific Ocean, Eastern Europe, Africa, Middle East, Southeast Asia, um, different theaters of World War II. Um, on these theaters, there's the battle track. And in the battle track, you're gonna have a cube here and that's basically your influence or how far you know, you're winning in that theater. Um, within each theater, there's gonna be, you can see these shields with numbers inside. These are different campaigns. And as you place units, you're placing them in the top campaign with I think one or two exceptions um, for special units. But primarily you're playing them in the available campaign, trying to win that campaign to gain those victory points. Your goal ultimately is to advance the war victory track up to at least 25 and you'll win the game. Um, you're going to be playing units, you're going to be assigning them wherever you want to. Um, it starts off fairly simple, um, with you know, pretty obvious choices, but as it goes, you start getting to, okay, do you advance, say an area you're ahead, you may, you may get to the point where you're like, do I keep advancing on my own, trying to win this theater, or do I try to prevent my opponent from winning their theater? Um, so that's where you start getting into more of the, uh, strategic choices, so, all right, um, the units, I've already have it set up for solo as well, FYI. So normally all the cubes start uh, at the red spot right in the middle. Um, each theater starts tied. There's been an advance here, Africa and Middle East, and two advances in Southeast Asia. Um, that's just based on solo setup, randomized um, setup. We also have drawn our units. Again, with the solo rules, it's a little different. So I will have my three, and I can pick from right here. You can see my uh, units down here. Um, and I get to choose from my, it's called the reserve. Um, I get to play whatever unit I want from my reserve. I have naval unit, aircraft or air force, which can be either land or sea, and a tank, which is a land unit. Um, so if you look on the board, you can see brown is land, blue is um, water. So you can play you know, aircraft in any of them, a uh, tile that has both, you can play either or obviously you have to limit to a single color if that's what it is. The AI here, and you play the allies, they play the Axis as in the solo, at least it's according to the rules. I'm not sure why, if there's a specific reason, um, but that's just the way the rules describe it. Anyway, they get to have, uh, start off with five, and for them, there's gonna, the flow chart is basically gonna, and then a combination of the stratagems, which is their drawing and um, determining their strategy for a turn, is gonna determine either what unit they use or ultimately it comes down, a lot of times it comes down to a die roll. You roll 1d6 and you're gonna randomly pick um, which one. On the different uh, battle spaces here, so within each theater and then within each campaign, we'll talk to you a little bit which, which type of unit you can use there. Um, there's gonna be likely be a symbol in there and that symbol is gonna have a special capability. For instance, you can see this looks like a little factory called industrial production. You're able to draw an extra unit token from your bag you say, bag? What? Wayne, you didn't mention any bags. Aha. Uh -huh. The game, as you, you start off, you have a bag like this, and it's filled with unit tokens. As you play, you can um, draw more. So every time you use one at the end of your turn, you're going to get to draw another one um, and just add it to your reserve here. So you're playing from your reserve, and at the end of your turn, you're drawing from your bag to add to your reserve. Um, but what, one of the things you can do is if you land on these the spaces here with the little gears, that's a research um, space. And you get to draw one random unit from the research pile and add it to your bag. Research pile is right here, and these are gonna be special units. So for instance, this is aircraft carrier. Naval unit, it also has a bombing ability. Bombing is right here. Um, again, that's something where um, each of the different spaces has a different effect, and I'll describe them as we get into them. I don't wanna go through each one of them right now because that's pretty dry and boring, so. We'll draw randomly from here, you add it to your bag, and then hopefully you get to draw it later on. So, I think that's the basics of the game. Um, I think we should just dive right in and see how it goes. Um, 
Axes get to go first, so let's go ahead and start off. We got our stratagem here. And I think I explained that. All the different tokens they have for deciding what they're going to do each turn. Um, at least it influences. I shouldn't say it totally decides because it doesn't. The flowchart does most of the work. But it does influence what they're going to do. It creates what they call filters. All right. So we'll draw one. And then once, as soon as you draw one for a turn, you go ahead and you put the previous one. Which the game starts off with this one out, outside because it's steamroll. And that's a... Um, you replay the same action you did the previous turn so it wouldn't make sense for the first turn let's put that back in all right all right so rapid deployment unit filter so you go we have this list here of stratagem tokens and it tells you on each one what you're going to do for a theater filter position filter and then puff and a unit filter maybe some have all of them theater position and unit filter some just have one for instance, rapid deployment here is a unit filter. Choose leftmost valid unit. So instead of doing a random selection, when we get to that point, we're just probably going to pick this one or this one, depending on uh, where we are. So, And this is what we have to do. We have to figure out where we are, right? So here's how it works. For the AI turn, you start off. You look at the quick reference guide here. AI bot selection procedure. You follow the flowchart. Selecting a theater. So we have to determine which theater are they going to play a unit in. Um, it always is a theater can close and win, which is at the beginning of the game, so it's going to be quite a while before they have that opportunity. So skip that. Campaign, it can close and win. Again, there, there are units out there, so none of the campaigns are close to uh, closing. Ignore any campaigns where it can't legally place any of its units. The stratagem filter. Um, our stratagem was, the rapid deployment is for a unit, so it doesn't apply to selecting a theater or selecting a position. If multiple theaters are tied, most empty spaces in an open campaign. Let's see. What you can clearly see is Africa and the Middle East. So we count, you know, three, two, two, three, four. So it's going to be Africa and the Middle East. He's going to play an African Middle East theater. Now we have to select a position. We can legally place a unit. I mean, any of them at this point. Um, positions, uh, excuse me, specific position that will close it and win a theater campaign. Again, it's the very beginning of the game, so there's none available for that. Stratagem filter. We're not, it only applies to units for this one. If multiple positions are, are tied, propaganda, if AI bot has 20 or more VP, it does not, we all have zero. Strategic advantage, let's see, is there strategic advantage? Yep, there is right here. So he's gonna play on this battle space right here. Um, strategic advantage, when you place a unit on strategic advantage, you can see the number with little arrows on either side. You can advance the battle track of a different theater. So you play your unit there, you advance a battle track on a different theater, and then the um, unit's numbers affect the battle track here. I'll explain as we do it here. So we are going to do strategic advantage for him. He's going to do the, um, then he selects a unit. He's going to remember our, um, it's going to be the stratagem filter is what's going to happen. I understand, I know that because I played it in games enough to know that. First to be a unit that will close the theater campaign. Again, doesn't apply. Legally placeable. Okay. Stratagem filter. Which is stratagem filter, remember, was leftmost valid unit. So leftmost valid unit is going to be the tank right here at three. So we're going to go ahead and place him in that battle effect here. Um, first off, what we do, or in the battle space, excuse me, we're going to use the battle effect right away. So strategic advantage, it tells you, AI bot plays a strategic advantage, execute the modifier where it would cause the greatest change. The greatest change, you look at this chart, and I know it seems like a lot of flipping going through the charts, but once you play a game or two, you really just kind of understand what the AI is going to do. And you'll have to refer, to refer to it a little bit, not nearly as much as when you start off. Plus, I'm explaining it, so I kind of have to go through everything. All right, so the greatest change, one that turns a player lead over theater to an AI bot lead. There are no um, player leads right now. One that turns a tie over theater into an AI bot lead. Okay, so we do have ties, Eastern Europe, Western Europe, and Pacific Ocean. Okay. Um... One that turns up, uh, excuse me. So, okay. One that turns a tie over theater into an AI bot lead. So we have the three here, like I said. So what we want to do is we want to randomize them. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to assign one, two, three, four, five, six. Roll to two. So Western Europe. So remember, his strategic advantage is a three. So Western Europe is going to move one, two, three on the battle track over. Now, we um, influence the unit unit number here, unit value, excuse me. So three, so now we're gonna go ahead and move the cube at Africa and Middle East over 
two, three. Now you can see he landed on this little shield with a number, a victory point shield. That doesn't apply right now. Those numbers apply if and when a campaign is closed. Now we go ahead, we've spent that unit. The AI has had his turn. Since he did use one unit and it's the end of his turn, he's gonna go ahead and draw from his sack here. We draw one out and with the AI, we go ahead and you place it. Oh, that was, that was mine, that was embarrassing. I was thinking of switching over to, it's a little harder when you're doing it, uh, videoing, videoing everything, because it's hard to keep track of them, because normally I have the bags on the separate sides. All right, here you go. So we drew this two naval unit with two, and he goes to the far right, and he just slide everybody over. Um, for you, it doesn't matter, because you just play whichever one you want, but because of the way the AI with the randomness, and then you know the leftmost unit, things like that, they just have you um, slide it down from the end. So, all right, that is the AI's turn. So now we go to my turn. And I like to go ahead and play anything I want, any of my units here. Um, I have my three units. I can play them anywhere I want. There's no restrictions um, other than obviously unit type. So um, let's go ahead and I'm gonna put, I'm gonna play my Naval One over here on the Industrial Production in Western Europe. Um, industrial Production, draw one unit token from your bag, edit your reserves. So go ahead, and the nice thing is when you use something like industrial production, so I'm gonna add one. All right, now I go ahead and uh, influence the battle track. I only had a one, so he goes one towards my side. And now it's the end of my turn, so I'm gonna go ahead and draw again for my bag to replace the unit I played. All right, so now I have four out there. So that by going to the industrial production, it's now giving me more choices. All right. Let's do the AI turn. Draw a stratagem. Oh, steamroll. So steamroll, um, I explained earlier, is just re repeats this action. So he's gonna uh, repeat the, uh, I can remember what it's called. Okay, rapid deployment. Repe repeats the rapid deployment stratagem filter, uh, which is choose left most valid unit. All right, so we can basically start at the beginning again for the AI. Um, select new theater can close. It can't, you know, none of those. Campaign, no. Okay. Strategy and filter doesn't apply here. So multiple theaters are tied. Most empty spaces. So we have, let's see, three, three. So it'd be either, it's going to be either Africa and Middle East or Southeast Asia because those are the two that have the most empty spaces. Um, highest VP for current campaign. It's going to be Africa and Middle East because it's C3. And then for Southeast Asia, it's only two. So he's going to place within the Africa and Middle East. Now to select the position, which position is he gonna place in? Legally place, okay, could be any of them. Um, close a campaign, not yet. Strategy filter doesn't apply. Remember, it's only a unit filter. Multiple positions are tied. Propaganda doesn't apply because he doesn't have that many VP. Strategic advantage, we already actually used that. Propaganda, again, if, he, if the player leads by three or less, or three or more, excuse me, which I don't lead at all. Industrial production. If the AI bot has four or less units, he has five, so no worries there. Um, plus there isn't one actually. Research, uh, here we go. Research, right here. So he's gonna place in the research position right here. Now, which unit? Remember, it's the, because of rapid deployment, it's gonna be the leftmost valid, which it's a land or um, land or sea. So he's gonna play this aircraft here because it's the leftmost unit. He's gonna place him there. So now he gets research. And as I explained before, you look at the little research pile here, you just go ahead and draw one randomly from it. Um, if you if you select it, you can look at it. I don't really know if it matters if you look at it when they select it, but. Oh, a four naval, that's a really strong unit. It's basically just like an elite unit, strong unit. Put it in the bag and shake her up. You don't get to draw it right away or anything like that. It's just now it's available in his pool um, for, for later on. So, all right, so we did the research. Now we go ahead, he has, a, it was a one unit value, so go ahead and advance his track over by one. Now we slide his units over. We're gonna draw one out of his bag here. Three, a three land unit. So, there we go. That's AI's turn. I'll go over to my turn. 
As you can see, as you start playing, and you know, you don't have someone just having to sit here and explain every little role, the turns start go really fast. I mean, like I said, especially I've played now, you know, half a dozen games, I can fly through my turns and the whole World War II in 20 minutes becomes a little more realistic when you're familiar with the rules and, and how uh, each of the things works. So, all right, what am I gonna do here? So, so I have a couple options here. I can start trying to block him, you know, kind of work his way back here, or I could almost say like, well, he's gonna win that one and I can focus on other theaters myself. That's what I'm kind of tempted to do. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use, so I'm gonna use my three, um, actually, yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and use my uh, three land here, three land unit. I'm gonna place him in Western Europe on the research space. So research, just like with the AI, I get to go ahead and randomly select one. Look at it, okay. So a two strength air, uh, naval, and then it has a bombing ability, which bombing, well, if you, when you use bombing, you get to uh, select, randomly select one of the enemy's reserves and your opponent's reserves, and then put it back in their bag. So then I'll have one less to choose from. All right, go ahead and put it in the bag here. Now we advance Western Europe three. One, two, three. So now you notice it's it shifted. Western Europe was over an axis controlled or uh, they were winning in Western Europe, I guess you should say. Well, now I'm winning, only winning by one, but I am winning here. So, because when you close out a campaign, whoever is winning, wherever that cube is, which is whoever side, they get those uh, victory points. Unless it's a tie in the middle and then both people get the victory points. So, all right. I played my unit, uh, did his influence. Let's go ahead and draw from my bag here. All right, a one aircraft. And now on to the uh, solo bots. Turn. Draw again. All right. Put that back. So we drew the economic warfare, um, which is theater. So there's no, uh, excuse me, theater filter. Prioritize theaters with industrial production and or bombing um, spaces. So it's going to be Eastern Europe. It's going to be Pacific Ocean. So either Eastern Europe or Pacific Ocean. Um, position filter. And then it's going to say which uh, which position. So whether you know whether you're doing the bombing or the um, production uh, industrial production. Excuse me. So so it's going to be either Eastern Europe or Pacific Ocean is where he's going to go. All right, let's go ahead and look. Go down the flowchart again. Um, nothing. There's no theater he can close and win. A campaign he can close and win. Not yet. He's closing in on Asian. Uh, excuse me, Africa and the Middle East. Here you can see this campaign. He has two of the four spots, so he's closing in on one. Um, ignore any campaigns where can't leave your place. Okay, strategy and filter. Again, it's, so it's likely going to be, at this point, it's going to be Eastern Europe and Pacific Ocean. Um, I know that I kind of looked at the strategy and filter first, just, just to explain it to you guys. In reality, you're always going to look at the flow chart. You know, a theater can close and win. A campaign can close and win. Then you start looking at the stratagem. So in reality, you might draw a stratagem that says, hey, go to bombing or industrial production, but in reality, because there's only one spot left and they can close out and win a campaign, they're gonna go there instead of, they're basically gonna ignore that stratagem and they're gonna go there. Just FYI in case um, you didn't pick up on that, but I've just been covering the stratagem um, tokens first, just to kind of give you an idea of what they're what they're doing, so. All right, so again, this we did reach into the stratagem filter though in this case, so it is gonna be either Eastern Europe or Pacific Ocean. Um, let's see here, so. Now, if if multiple theaters are tied, which it is, it's, it's these two. Most empty spaces in a campaign, two and two, so tied there. Highest VP, two and two, tied there, top over bottom. Now, it might be hard to see on camera, but there is a line here, and it basically has placed each of these campaigns, excuse me, theaters, excuse me, each of these theaters kind of on a different level. Um, and Eastern Europe is higher up here than Pacific Ocean based on the little diagram here. So he's gonna to go to Eastern Europe. Um, select a position. Now remember, he's looking for um, position filter. Now it says to differentiate if, it, if he had both um, industrial production and bombing. So for instance, say that he was on this campaign, it has both of them. Here it only has industrial production. So really we know that that's where he's gonna go. So, um, so he's gonna go on industrial production because we're gonna follow the filter. He can't close it out or anything. So we're gonna go by the stratagem filter. And now we select a unit. 
there was nothing here for which unit to select, what we're going to do is um, go based on the flowchart. So units that will close it, not available, legal placeable. It's going to have to be a land. So it's going to be land, a plane, or land again. So it's not going to be either of these naval units here. Let's see. All right, no effect space. Oh, well, it's a... We know it's going here, and it's going to be one of these. Um, it's not a blitz. It's not anything special. He's not leading by 20 more VPs, or excuse me, he doesn't have 20 more VPs, etc. So basically, multiple units are tied, select using a D6 roll. Since we have the three here, I'm gonna do one, two, three, four, five, six. Go ahead and roll. Four. One, two, three, four. So it's gonna be this two aircraft. He's gonna go here. We will uh, do the uh, battle space effect, which is industrial production. So he gets to draw one unit from his bag. Drew an admiral, but slide him down here. We'll engage the effects here, which is two, two influence over to the axis side. And I'll go ahead and draw again as it's the end of his turn. I'm going to place at the end here. So, all right. Um, I'm going to call it here just because I want to do a quick sort of tutorial so you guys can see exactly how the game plays. Uh, I will likely do another video where I do a full playthrough, but I wanted to do um, more of a tutorial playthrough uh, really quick. And I realized that playing out the whole game here is going to take a little longer than I wanted to for just a tutorial part. So what it would do is we continue that back and forth. We'd start closing out campaigns. Maybe I should um, maybe I should demonstrate that for you. So we'll do uh, we'll do that quick just to kind of see, give an idea of what's going on with that. So. I'm gonna go ahead and say Western Europe here, my turn. I'm gonna play on this last campaign spot. Now there's a couple things about this. One is propaganda space, and he adds one VP, because that's what the shield with the number inside is. So I now get to go on the track with my little cube at a one. Yay, I got one VP. Now I play him on here, and I'm gonna advance the battle space two spots. One, two. Now I've come close the campaign out. So I get to score these VPs. Well, I should say whoever Controls Western Europe, whoever's made, whoever has the cube on their side gets the VPs. Those are, there's two VPs, I have it on my side, so I get the two. So now I'm up to three victory points. Um, the little numbers on the battle tracks, if I had had this cube all the way over, say to the one, you would add that in each time you close a campaign. So it'd be two plus the one, three. And then say I closed out this one, it'd be three plus one, four, et cetera, et cetera. Um, you do that until you get up to. 25 victory points on the war victory track. So this is Blitzkrieg. Um, super simple, very abstracted, easy to play though. That's probably the best part. Um, if it was long and drawn out, I think I'd struggle with it just because of the fact that um, there's not a lot of depth to it. However, there is enough, especially for a game that plays so quickly. Again, it's one of those ones where, you know, even as many war games as I play and in-depth war games, I can look at this, and at my first glance, I say, what is this? You know, you're placing some units out here, kind of abstract, and influences influences a cube track. I mean, what is that, right? But the nice thing is, is it because it plays so fast, and you get to, you get to kind of see a little bit of everything, right? You get to see, okay, some small decisions. You get to start closing out theaters, and then it start you start thinking to yourself, oh, no, I have to stop them. And I have to gain enough VPs myself, especially you start seeing these guys racing along the victory point track. Because you know, as soon as it gets to 25, at the end of that turn, that person wins. So, hope you enjoyed this video of Blitzkrieg. I will definitely do at least one um, full-length playthrough so you guys can see the whole game in action. But hopefully this gives you an idea what, it, what it's like, um, whether it might be a game you're interested in. And if you need more convincing or not, uh, you'll be able to watch that full video when it comes out. So, alright guys, um, till next time. Later.